Welcome back everybody. We're gonna get into this service meter counter today. Uh, previous episode we got the housing and everything kind of overhauled, uh, resealed. So it's time to start taking this thing apart. You can see we have a lot of grit, a lot of grime in there and everything could just use a good uh, refreshing, cleaning up, what have you. So let's get into the disassembly, shall we? All right, so these things aren't really as complicated as they may appear on the surface. And if the counter assembly is in pretty good condition overall, majority of the time you can get by with just removing the main shaft here and getting all the dials out of there and just kind of going through all that stuff. I think this one's gonna be pretty good because boy, all this stuff works just nice and smooth. So we'll start by getting the dial stack out and to withdraw the main shaft that they all turn on there's a small little roll pin on this end um, you can see it it's even kind of been peened on each end on each side but uh, basically a small little 1 16th punch will drive that roll pin out you can see I got that pin on its way out Okay, there's that. Now, the shaft can come out and you just really have to make sure you pay attention to the position of all of the pieces in here. I just use a small punch through the one end, push it out the other way. Now, there is a spring down here there's a little bronze bushing inside of that, and we have usually three little shim discs below that. That kind of keeps enough spring tension on everything to keep everything located. So we'll just uh, carefully roll those dials out, and usually the painted surface on these is ready to wipe off just with the slightest touch. Hopefully that's not an issue here, but we will see. dial, two dials, three, and four. Here are those little bronze shims. That's the spring from the end and the bushing. And now we have these. These are more like a, a little brass uh, ticker right here. Two of them on this end. They come out like that. And now we really want to uh, pay attention to the condition of everything that's left here because, like I said, in a dial or in a counter assembly that's in otherwise good shape, this is about as far down as you really have to take them. Um, you always want to look very closely at the little notch between the teeth here. If that starts getting worn, it won't pick up these little gears on the bottom properly. You also want to look at the shaft that all these little pinion gears ride on. You want to make sure that's nice and straight. I've seen that thing get tweaked and bent if these things have ever bound before. This one looks all right. Lots of, like I said, lots of uh, nasty crud in there. I don't know if that's old dried grease or just sediment from something, I'm not sure. But um, I'm gonna clean this whole dial housing up as is because I'm suspecting I'm not gonna have to take this one down any further than this. So I was able to get everything cleaned up and it's all in really nice condition. So we're not gonna bother pulling any of these little pinions out from the bottom. Um, I've never been able to get the bronze gear off of this drive hub. Um, maybe you can see it. There's a little pin right there that goes through on this side. Um, I've never been able to get one of those to loosen up and come out. I don't know if that's a taper pin of some sort, but those things have, in every case have been really, really tight. So I've never been able to get this piece out. Um, if I would have had to have taken these pinions out, which honestly, these are real good. This one on the very end right here is the one that turns the most 
I don't even see like wear patterns on that. Um, very, very good condition. But if I would have had to have taken these pinions out, the little shaft that they ride on, you can see the end of it right there, is pinned in place on this end and that pin is flush with the surface of the housing. So the best way I've found to remove that pin, and here's one of my old uh, kind of uh, junker housings, is I'll go and I'll file on each side of that just to expose the end and then you can get on it with a tool like this and actually pull that retention pin out. At that point I can push the shaft out and then those small pinions, come on here, there we are, can be removed from there if any service has to be done on those. And then when you reassemble, just put the shaft back in and then just drive that pin back down until it seats. And that's really about all you can do with those. One other area to really scrutinize for wear is these two little gear teeth right here and then the cavity below them. Again, that's the area that's coming around and ticking that little pinion down there all the time when these are running. So that's uh, gonna be your heaviest contact area, your most chance for wear right there. I've got another worst case scenario here. You can just compare the difference between the teeth on those two um, drives on these little hubs right here. You can see both of those are mashed over. The tip is just about worn off of that one. Lots of wear, that's pretty much shot right there. That's kind of your worst case scenario. Final thing I want to show you here are the dials with the numbers on them. And I was very careful cleaning these up. Luckily, none of the painted surface uh, flaked off of these. And usually, they are just ready to come off just with the most slight touch. You can see I'm wiping the painted surface right off of that dial. That's what you usually see on these when you start trying to clean them up. Uh, you have two options. You can either just uh, let them stay in the rough, if you will. They're just aluminum dials is all they are, and the numbers are well stamped in them. You can still get a pretty good read, or your other option is to try to refinish them yourself. So what's worked for me before is your little model paints. Get out your fine tip little crafting brushes, and you can go around and you can get the white background painted on carefully again, and then to do the black down in the recessed numbers, my best luck has been to take a toothpick, really sharpen the point on it, dip it in your black paint, and if you're very steady and careful, you can guide that paint in around all of those numbers on the dials and get something that is a lot more readable again. That is incredibly time consuming, takes a very, very steady hand and a lot of patience. I was really happy that I can just go with these the way they are. They're discolored a bit, but Everything is still there. Markings are still legible. So I'm going to put it right back together just the way it is. All right, so I want to show you one thing before I start getting this all greased up and assembled. I want to show you how these little pinions work in conjunction with the drive hub and all of the other brass discs and dials and everything else. So you'll notice on these pinions, they alternate. We have a wide tooth and a narrow tooth, wide, narrow, wide, narrow, all the way around. The uh, reason for that, and of course they're all arranged just like that, the reason for the wide and the narrow has to do with these two teeth that are on this drive hub. Those teeth only ever engage with the wide teeth on the pinions. The narrow pinions just kind of float up against the face of this hub, and the narrow teeth are the ones that engage the next disc or the next dial on down the line. So as this is turning around, that toothed section right there advances the pinion one wide tooth every revolution. You can see down here, it caught a wide tooth, it turned it, and now a narrow tooth is just up against the face, so it's not being turned until those teeth come back around, engages the next wide tooth, turns it, and that's how the clicking action works. That's how you uh, basically transfer the rotation on down the line. So to begin assembly, I've got some grease on these pinions down here, and that really makes life easier. It can hold the ones out of the way that you're not ready for yet, otherwise they're sliding all over. Light coating of uh, assembly grease on the, uh, the main shaft here. We'll just start that in. Now I'll put the first bronze disc in, start it on the end of the shaft. 
You don't have to worry about where these are clocked in here because it just takes a few manual revolutions of that drive gear to get them where they need to be. And this is where we want to alternate disc, pinion, disc, pinion. So we got second pinion up against that. Second bronze disc can go on. And this is where, there we go, grease is sticking them together. Slide the next small pinion up to it. And this is where you want to start uh, paying very close attention to where your dials are oriented if you want to uh, either retain your original uh, reading or reset everything to zero. So we're just putting slight amounts of grease on the hubs of these dials and we'll start, uh, I should say I'll start it on the shaft. We'll position our uh, numbers where we want them. Advance the shaft out the end a little ways with our number where we want it to be. We'll advance the next small pinion if we can get them unstuck. There we go. And we'll continue on alternating uh, dial pinion, dial pinion until we run out of dials. All right, so we're down to the final dial and this is where things start getting a little bit fun. So there's the dial. What we're gonna have to do is load the spring and the bushing in at the same time because once that dowel gets put in there's not enough room to start those in after so i'll do my best to uh put that in there we'll make sure the shaft is not sticking out any further than it absolutely needs to be to start that dial on there and i'll just tell you guys right now there's no way that i'm going to be able to do this and catch it on camera at the same time <laughs> so um we'll just give it a try here Let's see how uh how many parts and pieces I can send flying. Work really hard to get everything positioned correctly first. Give myself a little bit more room there. There we are. Use small tools to help you out. Advance the shaft whenever possible, centers things up. Okay, we're started in the bushing. All the small pinions look right. Liking it so far. All right, so with everything in place there, the final three pieces are these thin little, look at that, I can't even pick them up, thin little shims, three of them. And they have to go in between the spring and the end cap of the housing. and. I'm probably just going to take a pick and gently pull that spring back enough to slide them down in there, use a little bit of grease, probably hold them all together as a three pack, then you're tr only trying to align all those holes at once. So that's what I'm going to do once those are in place. We'll just advance the, the main shaft right here and that ought to hold everything together. There we go. Shaft started up through. Liking it. Everything's right where it should be. So final step is to put the little roll pin down through there. Lock this whole thing together. Okay. Now we just see how things work here. See the dials ticking around? working on the pinions. Come up on a one hour advancement. It'll do about half at first. The other half will come next. There we go. That's one hour. And there's two. Boy, I've been doing a lot of work. <laughs> now I just gotta crank it back and zero it back out again, right? <laughs> All right, everything zeroed back out. Plenty of good assembly lube around the drive gear and all of the teeth on all of the dials, on all of the pinions down here, especially these ones towards the front that are going to do the majority of the turning. So what we can do now is put the whole counter inside the, uh, the housing here. So we pay attention to this notch here at the bottom, aligns with that peg right there.
There we are. Quick look in here. I think we did it right. Now we can seal it up, put the end cap back on. This can be driven down just until it contacts the counter. That's what keeps that seated. All right, gasket in place. It's just a matter of bolting it to the injection pump now. And we'll have another one in the books. All right, looking good, huh? I like it. This side's really starting to fill up, so one less piece on the to-do list. Thanks for watching, everybody. We're gonna keep rolling on ahead here. Uh, stay safe, be smart. Please tune in again.